This show brought to you by Rickmotech. Are you considering a Thrustmaster product? If so, you should consider Rickmotech. They are an authorized Thrustmaster dealer. They take support to the next level and offer optional firmware updates, product testing, and support, all free of charge and will ship worldwide. Check them out at rickmotech.com. John and Darren's Office Chairs provided by GT Omega Racing. You can check them out at gtomegaracing.com. Welcome to this week Inside Sim Racing, February 22nd, 2017. I'm John Sable, and this week, joined with Billy Strange. It's just a two-piece this week. Yes, we are We are a two-person band this week. <laughs> Wait, which one does rhythm? Uh, definitely me. You get all the solos. Okay. Oh, that's going to go bad. <laughs> so yes, Darren was busy with stuff this week, so... Just the both of us to hold down the fort and give you the update on all the week's news as I keep looking at my mic to make sure I turned it back on. I, I can say, hear you. Yeah. That's good. I, I will say, you guys are brutal in chat before the show starts. Oh, late, <laughs> late, late. Ah. <laughs> you guys got to watch some other live streams. I've seen you know, it's, a lot of people start late. It's just that's to late. make sure that the audience gets all the way in. That is true. That is true. It's always, it always gets better as we go, as people, more people get off of work and et cetera. What's that face for? I, I don't know if it gets better as it goes, but it certainly continues. Well, you have a point there. <laughs> so, yes, hashtag forever late. I like that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the splash screen is going to be now, if I remember next week. Hashtag forever late. Um, right. Anyway, this week we got some good stuff. We got a giveaway to recap. We have a whole bunch of news stories this week. Uh, a couple happenings. A poll question that I actually remembered to <laughs> to make. Did you this remember week. to? All yes. right, good. Yes, there is a there is a poll question up in the top corner uh, this week, and then uh, Q and A. Already saw you guys put some questions, and hopefully during the show, Billy will grab those or wait towards the end of the show, and we'll grab them all at once. Would be would be preferable if we uh, if you waited till closer to the end, so I don't have to keep glancing at chat. Yes, that would be better. So uh, let's see. So with that, let's jump into things and going to start. Oh, uh, did I put this in here? Please oh, tell what me did, I added this. Oh, what did you do? I did or it. not do? We're gonna we're, we'll get to that. We'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, good. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> We have our Thrustmaster TSPC Racer giveaway. I put the link in the description. Uh, I'll add that link later, and we'll talk about that. But we still have one more week to uh, submit to that. And then next week on the show, we will announce a winner. So saw saw a question about that when we first got started. Yay. Yay. Okay. Uh, I'll work on that later. First off, uh, Billy, what's going on with Milestone and new IP? Well, uh, we're still waiting. They they announced to make an announcement, I guess, is how you put it. Uh, so they partnered with a European distributor. How do you say that? Koch? Coach? Koch? Co I, I, I would think Coach. Okay. Media. And it's a secret IP. Uh, the rumor, or I think actually they stated it was supposed to be more focused on a Western audience, supposed to be uh, unveiled at GDC, which is the games develop or game developers conference that takes place. Actually, it kind of starts now. They're doing their their game developer uh, conference talks, and then more of the conference itself takes later takes place later in the week. And then, so we'll have to see what that does. Uh, MXGP three is due out in spring. Usually that means for the European audiences, if you are on consoles, typically that is another six months from then. Yes, yes, which is always yeah. odd. I And I, I have no idea. I have no idea why that, they've never said why that is. It would be very interesting to know why, if it's a licensing deal, you know, the, again, they don't have to worry about, it's digital distribution, you don't have to worry about <laughs> how this rolls out. So, I I don't know. I don't know the... There's obviously some reason for it because they're doing it with every title. And then uh, they've got a follow-up with their uh, MotoGP license to uh, MotoGP 17. 
Um, and that will be unveiled for a release date at a later point. I think that's about it. Yep, yep. So that is it. So, I mean, there is... Uh, oh, and by the way, someone in chat said, Bill, you're a little bit loud compared to me. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's like, okay, we're going to get MXGP. That whole uh, it being Unreal Engine 4 is fascinating since, you know, we've only... You know, that, that's been the excitement around GTR 3, but that's not coming until 2018, right. and we're going to get a sample of it here. Uh, it's all supposed to be in CarCraft, but, you know, whenever that comes out. So... Um, in theory, MXGP3 is going to be the first title in racing genre to show it. So that's cool. That's going to be because that's coming in the springtime. But yeah, this this whole mystery IP, fascinating. I wonder what the <laughs> just my brain turns is what could it be? I mean, with their background, you know, they've got obviously Sebastian Loeb, and then motorcycle titles. Like, I'm curious, oh, it could be a flat track game. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I... I have no idea what they're going to... I have no idea what this is going to be. Yeah, like you said, I don't know if it's a question of it's going to be, like, a U.S.-centric or more North American-focused title, or if it's just them releasing stuff at the same time. At the same time, yeah. yeah that could obviously be it. Yep. I, <laughs> I kind of hope not, but... I guess that needs a GDC announcement. Uh, apparently, so yeah. So is, is GDC that started now? They're doing today? like their developer talks. Like I was just watching the IGN was live streaming it, and they they kind of have like these round, not really a roundtable, but these presenters talk about how they got to where they're at. So right now, or earlier, it was the head of the Overwatch team, and he was talking about you know how they came about overwatch and the struggles that they went under that started in 2007 all this kind of stuff so they they have like keynote speakers leading up to the actual conference itself it's kind of interesting gotcha gotcha okay you already you already turned down your mic is that what i'm yeah i moved i moved okay i'm just checking I, i'm waiting to see chat's always 30 seconds behind us so Okay, yeah, so that's what we have right now on whatever that is, as I move my mic a little closer. Maybe we'll balance each other out. Um, okay, next up, if I can find my stories, uh, PS, or uh, well, Dirt Rally for the PSVR was released the other day, and uh, as you see the trailer here, you can drive. You can also do a co-pilot deal, which I'm curious if anyone's given that a try yet. But uh, yeah, it was released. It cost uh, $13 in the US and 13 euros and 9 pounds, or about 10 pounds, and then about 20 Australian dollars. So um, yeah, curious if anyone out there in chat has picked that up. I've, only, I've heard really good, I've only heard good comments about it so far. People really happy with it, so. People seem to be okay with it. Um, I've only heard a couple odd observations about it and i'm not sure if that's uh i'm not sure what that is but for the most part people seem to be very pleased with it in fact uh since it came out before our beyond the gloves episode interview with paul <laughs> a lot of the comments were no please please we want it we want it on the psvr so have to see what happens there yeah uh one also one thing of note they said that if you do have ps4 pro it's supposed to run I don't know if it's run a little better, or they just they said additional performance capabilities to deliver a significant graphical improvement over normal PS4. So um, take that for whatever that is worth. But you know, it, it was it was funny getting having the Beyond the Gloves. That hopefully you guys got to check out. Really great interview with Paul Coleman. Thanks again for Paul coming on and Andy organizing that. And um, the the conversation around VR was fascinating. It was definitely like. We want to do it, you know. We want to support VR on the PC and then obviously the PS uh, VR, um, but it's it takes resources, and we're trying to build an entire game here. So yeah, uh, it, it was it was it was interesting. Yeah, it uh, it definitely kind of gives you an insight into the. All right, we've already put it out there. Now we've got to figure out if it's actually going to be profitable because they're a business. 
they need to make money. And if they're just dumping resources into something that is such a small market and there's not a lot of return. And the problem is PSVR is sold out. I mean, you can't get one. So it's not like they're going to be able to expand in the near future until they come out with more headsets. So it, it's, I don't know. We'll have to see. Have to see. I hope VR, you know, VR will probably stay. It, it, my only worry is how often it will get implemented into a title. So, yes, yes. And we, and we, were, we were talking after we, we, we were almost uh, the way where the conversation was going. We thought Paul might actually give us some numbers. That's what we were hoping for. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. like, you know, developers, you should have some numbers like how what percentage of user base use VR. And, we, and, and we, I thought you almost went there and then we kind of turned a different direction. Um, cause yeah, that, that is the, that is the fascinating thing because there are plenty of users out there. I, I've seen the comments, uh, on the dirt Four stuff like that interview and people are like, I love VR. I, I want it. You know, there's, there's a hardcore that like they, they, they only want to race in VR, but yeah, it'd be fascinating to know what percentage of people do race in VR, but didn't quite get there maybe for another time. Oh, believe me, we had plenty more questions to go, but we had limited time and, uh, we'll, we'll. We'll have them on again at a later yes. at a later date. Yes, hopefully. And then and then we can all, and then we can also ask uh, what uh, Kevin Brooks asked here. Will it support triples? I know oh, we almost uh, we almost went there. We had a whole bunch of we were yeah we were we were that close. Yeah. So, um, but no, glad I see you guys enjoyed that, and we'll work on doing more of those interviews. Hashtag um, soon. Hashtag soon. So next up, R Factor Two has put out some more information via roadmap. Uh, Billy, what are they talking about? So they got some DX11 uh, previews. And with that, they're looking for modders to help make sure DX11 implementation works correctly for modded content. Uh, what's What else do we hit on? They also talk about NOLA being released next week. That's on the 28th is looking at some more UI previews, get it looking better, and then they're still working on the VR uh, portion of R Factor 2, and looks like it's not going to come anytime soon because they say more info in the next couple of months, so you're probably another good four to six months away from it being put into R Factor 2, I would guess. And then they talk about... <laughs> They announce, again, what is with the announcement of an announcement? I know. <laughs> Announcing a competition structure that doesn't have anything really to put to it since they first announced it. So, that's it. Yeah, there was a bit of, uh, actually a lot of rehashing compared, I mean, then to be fair, when they tried, they've, they've kind of gone into the model that Automobilista does now, which we'll right. hit on next, where you do a monthly dev update, and Race Room's done them in the past too, um, which is nice, but sometimes things take more than a month, so then you kind of reiterate. It was last, The last couple of months has been like, no, we're working on NOLA. NOLA's coming. This month it's like, okay, NOLA's going to be here next week. So it's kind of, you know, how that goes. But I will say, um, I, 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 I pulled up this, this screenshot of their inter user interface here. Yes. Uh, looks super slick. Oh, yeah, much nicer looking. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. I, I agree. It'll be nice to have a complete overhaul. I was telling John earlier I was working. I'm working on a video using the USF 2000 cars, and it'll be nice to have an overhaul <laughs> in those menus and stuff. Yes, yes. I will say I was a little more uh, as as there's a uh, rabid uh, VR conversation going on in chat. It was fascinating, and that's why I put in the notes here for them to say like they'll have more on VR in like a couple of months. It's like oh okay. So we got a little we got a little time here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's that's them saying, yeah, don't get don't get too excited yet. We we still got more right. work to do. So that was funny. Can't can't be an easy uh, thing to put in, especially when it wasn't built for that to begin with. Exactly. Hey, gamer muscle stopped in. Hey, how's it going? And a good Wednesday. That's right. Uh, what else? What do we got up next? Automobilista, what John? What's what's there? So, uh, Automobilista, another dev update. Actually, they haven't had one in a while. Um, 
but a handful of things hit on, including this little ARC Camaro, which is the Aussie Racing Cars, which, um, these things are kind of ridiculous. It's essentially a, a, it's a motorcycle engine, a Yamaha engine, and these cars are tiny. They produce 125 horsepower, but they, they go pretty quick. Uh, um, uh, Dean noted in the blog that there's some places that they go, they go to the same place as the VA supercars some tracks, and they'll average about six seconds slower than the VA supercars, which, um, that's all in the mail. So... <laughs> That is coming as a free car. That originally was going to be, I think, a pay car, uh, but that's going to be a free one. Next up, they also sticking on Australian content. Uh, hey. Ad- Adelaide is coming. Is it, was, yes. that a yay? was that a yay for yeah, you? That, that was a yay for me. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I, I'm excited about this. This is this is a cool circuit. So that's going to be that's going to be cool. It's yeah. coming. It's coming. That in... wasn't a sarcastic yay, by the way. <laughs> I'm genuinely <laughs> excited. Sorry, that was kind of like a. Uh... <laughs> so this is coming in uh, classic and in the modern uh, version. So uh, that will be cool. And then there is some work happening on. Uh, where's my notes here? This is the virtual experience portal that they've been working on to try to give you kind of like your own profile um, and, a, and, a, and a place to go for racing online and organizing racing. And one of the interesting things that they're going to be rolling out in the next update, which is version 1.3, which is coming out, uh, it says in February, so only like a week left. Um, but that they're going to have a feature where you have the ability to host prizes and award them in competitions to add another dimension to the sim. So I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah. And you get to have those a rad looking uh, avatar like that blood I, guy. I can't wait. <laughs> With Only the, thing better would be chains and a clock around his neck. I'm just kidding. He needs a chainsaw. Oh. With that blood that blood splatter? There needs there to be a go. chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> um and then lastly of uh, interest is there is going to be a update to Automobilistas. Well, I don't have an update, but a brand. A, right now, brand they new. currently have right. a pseudo F1 car. Well, now they're coming out with a 2017 uh, pseudo F1 car. I didn't see anywhere in the announcement that they used the words F1 or Formula One. Uh, <laughs> but that's essentially what they are going for here, which nice. that, that is cool because I do enjoy, yep. enjoy their current modern F1 car. Yep. Oh, and uh, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the donation. Yes. So, uh, yeah, Automobilista uh, version 1.3 update coming next week, allegedly. And uh, something else that I don't, I didn't have here in the notes, but they noted um, development's going to end on the title. It sounds like in the coming months. I think about springtime, if I remember right. And they're going to go to version 1.5. And then that's going to be the stopping point for Automobilista. So, yep. which, yeah, they had, back, like they had announced was... that they were going to start working on something else. So we'll see what that maybe we'll we'll get to hear what that is. Yeah, John, and get then, John, get that scoop. I know I need to work on that. But yeah, I was, I was going to say, I, I feel like 1.5 is a stopping point for there's been other titles. I feel like maybe that's where NASCAR Racing 2003 ended up at. I feel like 1.5 is like it's, it's kind of common for, okay, here it is, now we're done. But um, anyway, one thing that was not mentioned in that post, again, talking about VR, uh, no mention of VR there. And they, because they mentioned back in the fall that uh, after enough of you guys with angry pitchforks, they were going to develop <laughs> VR. That's a pitchfork. Two of them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> they, um, Are you yeah, sure they about they, that? I know, I just realized what I just realized. What I was doing. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, no screen caps. Um, yeah, anyway, there was no mention of VR in this uh, dev update. So, um, yeah, don't know what to say about that. Did they, they didn't mention when Adelaide was coming, did they? I didn't, I didn't see it for a release date because we're not getting it in this update, right? I thought, yeah, I have to look through it again. It was a long post. I, I thought it, it's, okay, it's going to be out. I thought it was supposed to be out in, in 1.3. Oh. Sweet. Um, oh, and also out in 1.3, there's going to be some graphical changes. Now you actually see dirt being pulled onto the racetrack. I guess it is it's currently being modeled, but it just wasn't graphically there. 
So that's another update coming in 1.3. So um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fairly decent size update. And I don't. It'll be interesting to see if there's an update between 1.3 and 1.5. They didn't really define that, but yep, it's happening. Updates, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, part of the part of the modern process with games now. Exactly. Just keep on updating them. Uh, let's see. Next up, Project Cars Two. Um, before I give this over to Billy, this was something that there's been so much information that's kind of come out and it's been kind of spread all over. That kind of wanted to do another update this week. So, uh, Billy, what are some of the other things that we know now about Project Cars Two that we didn't know back a couple weeks ago? I I can't even remember what we covered. <laughs> oh, it's been so much. I mean, uh, so I don't think anything that's divulged here is anything, you know, revolutionary. They're, I think the thing, again, VR being the hot topic, it, they, it's not coming out of the box with VR. Kind of sounds familiar. Um, but they are working on it, but there is no, there is no official support. Um, I would assume that VR will come out. Or it sounds like it will come out on the PC, however. Unlike Dirt 4. Um, sporting 21 by 9. They gave they gave just some minimum specs for the computer, uh, for the PC users. And then they also go into what it will run on the PS4 and the Xbox One, which is basically the same as it did before. They're shooting for 60 frames a second on each console, which means Xbox One will be at 900p. And the PS4 will be at 1080p. So make sure you get all your P's lined up. <laughs> and I think we might have touched it on this already. The audio is improved from Project Cars 1. And uh, let's, looks like they've licensed some, or quote-unquote, enough real-world liveries as well. From the, uh, fic, you know, they were a lot of fictional ones in the first in the first title. Yeah, no, I'm still kind of bummed about that. Of all the things we've heard, uh, we'd really like to have custom paint schemes, and um, I'm glad they have some real-world liveries, because that's always more immersion, but yeah, still kind of bummed about that. Um, so I, I didn't realize this. Oh, wait, first off, put a pin on Automobilista VR. Uh, Ernie Gaming said from Renato regarding VR, it's not in the works, but it's not written off either, hence no news. Um, so that's fascinating. Um, mm. and then VR on Project Cars 2, it's, it's, it's not going to be available at launch? Because I thought it, I thought it was. Wait, say that again? Is pro so you're saying VR for Project Cars 2 is not going to be available at launch? Cause I uh, was. there was nothing official. Okay. Because you know, the statement they have on the website, Project Cars 2 will offer VR 12K 21 by 9 and finally, triple screen support from day one onwards. So, I don't know if that day one onwards comment is for triple screen support or it's for all those. Well, it, it, the next line or the line you have here and the one I, I read was, you know, oh. it's even being worked on for PSVR support too. Which okay. means, it's, from what I read before, unless it could have changed and, you know, <laughs> with all the info that's coming up, but my understanding was... It was not going to be available at launch. They were working on it and looking into it, but they made no official. As of when I read it, and this statement seems to support the same thing, nothing official for PSVR. Okay, for PSVR. I know. They said okay. that they, they did the same thing with when it was Project Morpheus before it became PSVR with Project Cars 1. It was going to be a PSVR title, and it never happened. So. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I was thinking VR for the computer. But okay, so PSVR, gotcha. That makes yes. that that makes more sense. Okay. Um. So yeah, that is a news update on Project Cars too. As Billy said, this was a lot of stuff that was on like the website and stuff, but you know, information is kind of fractured everywhere. So mm -hmm. just wanted to kind of bring that back to where we are right now. Um. Next up on the long news week. We have Race Room, Structured Online Races in Development, moved to Unreal Engine 4 on the horizon. So um, uh, a fair amount of this comes from a, um, a uh, report, I guess, blog uh, over at Race Department and uh, with part of the interviews that they've been doing with Sector 3 Studios. 
And essentially, it's talking about where Race Room's going. Uh, unsurprisingly, Race Room will gain uh, the Unreal Engine 4 graphics engine, but it will not get it until GTR 3 has it and is out, and GTR 3 is not slated until 2018. So, um, as someone I think kind of jokingly put in the comment section on our website, okay, great, so we'll see it in 2020. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which, yeah, maybe. Um, and then uh, some other things that are happening. The next patch will already include a new reputation system, which will be used to determine whether one is eligible to partic participate in certain online races, which is fascinating. Um, we know they've been working on trying to get some online races a little more set up nicely. Um, so I guess that's one element of it. Another element is schedule races, which we've talked about in uh, before. Uh, they are on their way to, although there is a strong focus on the online stuff. Oh, then there's another note. Even though they're working on the online stuff, they're still working on the single player support stuff. That's not in jeopardy. Uh, and then these screenshots here have been rolling through. Uh, besides this one that shows the Unreal Engine 4 uh, quote unquote leak from last year, uh, it's rolling through the new GT3 cars, McLaren 650S and BMW M6 that are. I've I got to be showing up here soon. They've been teasing them forever. They, who knows? Who knows? It, you, they kind of throw these teasers out so early, and you almost wish they would just hold them back a little longer. But they they have people to answer to, you know. Sure. They, especially, I don't know if these guys are, but especially if they're a, a publicly traded company with investors, they have people to answer to. So they need to put those things out. But I wish they would just hold them a little closer to the vest for a little longer, and then you know maybe like a month or like two weeks. It was interesting when Todd Howard, or not Todd Howard, but the, I who, uh, I forget his name now that I mentioned in the Beyond the Gloves interview, Pete Hines. He said as a developer, we would actually prefer to wait to like two weeks before we even announce the game before it launches. He's all, but that's just not reality. He's all, because it's very stressful to announce something far in advance and then have to constantly be worried about, are we going to be able to deliver that thing? Sure. It, it, it's funny you bring this up because um, uh, I was thinking this something along these lines might be my topic for when we film Beyond the Gloves tomorrow because um, there has been so many um, announcements of different time frames. Okay. So uh, maybe that will happen, maybe not. I've I, I put about five minutes of thought into it, so <laughs> I figured I'd figure it out by tomorrow. Um, so, okay. Uh Elsewhere in race room news, a new again announcement. A new car was announced yesterday. Uh, Billy, right. what what have you this uh, interesting looking thing? Uh, interesting is a nice way to put it. <laughs> God, that thing is, I I thought it was fake at first. I thought they, I thought it was a made up car, and then no, it's the it's the KTM Crossbow GT4. Uh, that competes in the European GT4. I'd never seen the car before. And, I, uh, I, I, I've seen I, recently. I saw one of these racing somewhere. I don't remember what it. Oh, Bathurst. There was something. Oh, okay. There was, there was a KTM there. I don't know if it was this one, but there was a KTM there racing in the lower uh, division. That back end looks like an Indy car. Which Indy car? The back end of the car doesn't bother me. It's this geometric-ish kind of. Mesh? I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm just. I'm not sure how to feel about this car. Hmm. Well, it looks kind of funny, but what's the uh, what's some of the specs on it? Uh, what does it say here? GT4 version will be powered by a two-liter VWFSI engine, uh, producing around 316 brake horsepower at the rear wheels. It has a carbon monocoque body for strength and weight savings. This car in race trim is around 900. And 99 kilograms. Uh, so powder weight ratio will make this a fun car to drive. So they say out this spring. Yes. So uh, yeah, that is that is a lot of mesh work. That is fascinating. It's it's like it's it's like I have a chain link fence here at the house. It's like they went and they like rolled it off the fence and like we're gonna right. like zip we're gonna zip tie this on the back of the car and kind of put like an aerodynamic doodad element to it. Hey, you know, it doesn't have to be pretty to be fast or win, so. See, that that's right. Gary Muscle knows knows where it's at. Americans only like cars that turn left. 
Damn right. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Gamer Muscle said, uh, Americans only like cars that turn left. So. Technically, sprint cars turn right. <laughs> as as you grab your mug. With a bunch of cars that turn left and right on it. See? I believe. Man. A few, a few of us have uh, jumped the fence and figured out how to make right-hand turns. Not Just often. Just a few. Yeah, not often, though. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Next up, oh my god, we got so many stories. There it is. G Rally. Oh, G Rally, and the video starts uh, not where it's supposed to. But anyway, uh, G Rally All Terrain Simulator is now on Steam Greenlight. This is from the guys who, uh, what's the website? RBR. It, it's an Italian site. I don't have, I don't have the name. I'm sorry. Oh, I. Um. Good but luck. anyway. But anyway, this is definitely of the uh, small title that uh, can variety, because this is a small group of developers that work on this project in the free time, and that is why it is now on Steam Greenlight for you guys to go and vote on and get it to be produced. Um, let's see. Let me go and pull up. Here's the Steam thing. And I don't have that music yeah. blurring, blurring in my ears. Um Anyway, let's see. Uh, the developers feel like the time is right to move from private beta, beta testing to the public by launching the game on Steam Greenlight, where the community can vote for its favorite game, which are then chosen and published on Steam by Valve. It is specially made for indie games that are still in development, limited resources. Primary focus points are physics, as, as the subtitle All Terrain Simulator also suggests an implementation of extensive online mode with, with support up to 60 players, which that's nuts. Yeah, um, right. The game is based on the Unity game engine and will offer modding support to firstly involve the community, but also to fill the game with content since licensing is an issue with a game that is still in its early stages. At least a small amount of content will be included from the start, though. So, that is G Rally. And by the way, what? Tony, Tony Miller, thank you for the donation. We appreciate it. Oh, yes, thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, that is a new rally title. You know, the interesting thing is I heard about this a while ago. Um, kind of heard about it, then, you know, didn't really, you know, look much into it more. Then we went and we put posted this blog up on the website yesterday. And, uh, boy, a lot of people on social media were really excited about this. So, um, apparently there's a lot of interest in this. Yeah, I think I think the idea is that it's, you know, from a smaller developer probably makes everybody else feel like they've got a little more ownership of it because uh, they can help get it pushed through and hopefully modders will take to it as well. Uh, the interesting thing that I've found is they are ending Steam Greenlight. Really? So, yes. So I think this is actually a push before it's really ready to go to sneak not sneak. I don't mean this, you know, any sort of nefarious way. It just to get in before Steam Greenlight is canceled and their new system is implemented where they could have quite a large fee to pay to actually get it up on the site just to uh, get looked at. Huh. When, when it, you know when it ends? Does it I know? don't remember the specific date, but it's it's from now to spring. I just I don't remember what what date it was. Um, they they named a date, and I don't remember if it was March or not. And I don't want to say because I can't, I can't remember when it is. Um, but they are ending Steam Greenlight. So uh, my my suspicion is, and like I said, not to say this is nefarious, but to get it in before Steam Greenlight cancels because I think it's only like a hundred bucks or fifty bucks. I don't know. It's a very small number to get it on to Steam Greenlight to get it voted on by the community. And there's all kinds of like. You know, it's been documented corruption and people buying up votes and stuff like that. But wow, uh, yeah, the green light is odd. Hmm, that kind of sucks though, because I mean, you know, if if you can remove you know, remove all the issues with it, um, the uh, in theory, it's a a very cool way to get you know indie games made. So you know, kind of sucks that that platform's disappearing. Yeah, it's 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 a hard it's it's a hard line to and we're kind of staring away from the, this topic, so I'll keep it short. It's just it, a lot of stuff was getting through that 
was not the quality I think most people want. But then you you kind of run into the point, you know, who is the gatekeeper? How you know what bar do you make that says yes, you can put it on there? No, you can't. There's a lot of back and forth going on, and some people want that really high, you know, like a five thousand up to twenty thousand. There's people even wanting developers wanting twenty thousand dollars to get into this new system, mm. um, which would hurt. I would assume somebody. You know, like the the team or the guy. I think it's one person, isn't it? Or a couple people working on yeah. G Rally. So, uh, assuming that would hurt them, and we don't want that either. So it's it's a hard balance to find. I don't know that there's really a good way to go around about doing it. But hopefully, uh, G Rally comes out and it's great, and everybody likes it because it's cool when smaller developers can do this. It is, and uh, I, I will say, I, I think maybe would might be the biggest selling point that I'm seeing here is that they are looking for a mod community and that you know hopefully they set it up where it's easy to put mods in because right now at the moment um, on the rally side you know what can be mod I mean it's still what Richard Burns rally probably primarily mm -hmm. so you know with, with you're not able to mod Codemasters or even what Milestone's done um, then you know this might be an avenue for that yes yeah, so hopefully, yeah, it, it um, everything works out. Hopefully. Yep. Oh, okay, uh, next up we have a couple news items from iRacing, including a new track, Billy. Yes, the bull ring. I've actually, well, I didn't race on it. I stood next to it. Um, Closer the than me. Bull, <laughs> yep. <laughs> bull ring at Las Vegas Motor Speedway is coming to iRacing in the Season 2 build. It's a 3 8 mile short track uh, and is a staple of West Coast short track racing. I uh, I have turned some laps in the Alpha. And you got to be careful not to burn the right front off. Do you turn left? No, we can go backwards. Oh, well, there, there oh, we go. <laughs> See, you guys said we couldn't go the other way. Right? <laughs> I mean, as long as I can use the wall like the original uh, Gran Turismo, I'm fine. Oh, that, oh! speaking of that, there was a <laughs> video. Do you see this? No, what? Oh, there was a video that I saw. Um, I saw it on Facebook, and it's, it's kind of bad. But um, it, was, it was a video of driving the new Asoto Corsa Highlands track. We talked about it last week. Um, mm -hmm. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a, I don't know, the back view from a, a car. And he's going into the corner, and he slows down. Another car comes around the outside and does the old park it against the wall and pass everyone maneuver. Oh, nice. And he did, and he did that. So um, <laughs> that's, yay, yay that's, for no damage. Yeah, so that's something that uh, the, the guys over at AC there might have to, to work on because you, you, sh you shouldn't be able to go in Days of Thunder it against the guardrail and speed up. But <laughs> that is that is the way how pretty much all the, I feel like all the racing games were played like back in like the nineties. <laughs> yeah, it it was you know, I never did that. I always felt very guilty. <laughs> I might have booted them out of the way, which is no better. But <laughs> that's what should be. Doing. It was just AI at that point. Yeah. Um, one thing that I also put here on our notes. Just to, I don't know, kind of drive a point that I think is actually pretty impressive. Um, what iRacing does, iRacing has a ridiculous list of short tracks. And this is another one to list. So let's recap. They have Williams Grove, Southern National, South Boston, Lucas Oil Raceway, IRP, um, New Smyrna, Concord, Stafford, Oxford Plains, Lanier, USA, Irwindale, Langley, Five Flags. So that's thirteen. Don't um, forget Eldora. Well, I'm 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 doing pavement, but anyway, so that's it's coming. Well, yeah, that's that's, that's thirteen. <coughs> Williams what? Grove is a pavement. Oh yeah, you're right. Why did I put that in there? So okay, so twelve pavement tra tracks currently in the title, and now they're gonna get uh, the bull ring for thirteen. Um, that's a pretty good selection for let's be honest, a type of racing that isn't like you know the most popular. So I, I found that I found that pretty impressive. It's it's nice with the super late models and the uh, I like running the modifieds around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The modified is something I've never gotten into. I don't. I think I own one of them and I've driven a few laps. And I was kind of like, eh, okay, too much stuff to drive. <laughs> never. That's what, that's what I'm blaming on. 
Uh, so yeah, no, so I, I do I do find that pretty impressive that iRacing has all these uh, short track ovals. And then we have something else coming from iRacing hashtag soon. What is it, John? It is a Ferrari. So um, nothing of interest really picture-wise to show. This all comes from a tweet from Steve Myers, executive vice president and executive producer at iRacing. Ooh, he has two titles. That's fun. Um Posted a picture here of the Ferrari 488 GTE car that they, as you can read, well, okay, for you podcast listeners, uh, he wrote, here is the Ferrari update for you. Uh, we finally got a visit with the car, with a picture of the car. So, um, yes, they should, so in theory, they should be scanning this car, which is good, because I know one of the biggest hangups in them, and I think any, not even them, but any developer, and them making a car is getting access to the data. So um, getting access to a car that can go and laser scan, that is a good start in that process. Um, don't know when it's going to be out. I know it had already been confirmed that it's not coming out in season two, which is like a few weeks out or something. So, um, but yeah, maybe season three. Maybe. <laughs> uh, every time I glance to the right gamer muscle, you're killing me. Yeah. Yay. That's my car lent to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, That's right. I'll give him my jag. I'll give him my jag next week. There you go. So um, one thing that I, I I commented on our one of our, our Facebook posts of this last night is some people were saying, "Well, it'd be nice if this was a GT3 car, so it could you know have another GT3 modern GT3 car." But it's GTE. I racing currently doesn't have a GTE car, and I think the hope is that they're going to come out with the Porsche RSR GTE car that's new this year, and then they can race each other. And we're gonna have two proper cars, that, proper GT cars at Le Mans. This uh, this is a beyond the glove segment because I it, it's it's a it's a, it's an interesting thing to talk about when you're getting games, you know, the the sim as a service, and they keep adding vehicles. And where do you do you try to still create a large field, or do you start splitting it and splintering and does it start diluting the the pool of players? So we'll get into that on another day. But uh, yeah, hopefully they do have some more GTE cars coming because um, some of the stuff is out of date, which I don't mind. I actually made myself run that Audi R8, and I'm actually now the same speed with the R8 as I am with the Mercedes. So Good. I felt like I accomplished something. <laughs> Good, but the Audi isn't out of date. No, it's not. I was just... <laughs> segueing into the division between the the two because you have the the audi and the mercedes and then you have the mclaren yeah. and the bmw the z4 so yes a little bit of a little bit of a division a split there they need to put the bentley in that would be fun mm, yeah no that would be that would be cool but <laughs> i'm getting me getting made fun of of my my water bottle my sippy cup oh i mean it was a christmas present from the girlfriend so I didn't pick it up. Uh, let's see. Last, lastly, I think maybe the last news item. Um, there yes. was an update, uh, I believe, yesterday to Forza Motorsport Six. And uh, Billy, what got updated to this old timey uh, title? What well, it? Interesting <laughs> stuff. You know, there. The, everybody's trying to be around for the esports thing so uh what did we have here manual grid ordering and online private lobbies are now possible i've the host being the player who created the lobby can put any player on any position in any position allowing for a completely individual starting order uh also a new info panels option has now been added for spectator <laughs> spectators of multiplayer races as well i could say that very easy this option allows spectators to either add a race overview or a player overview to their screen. Um, update is available now. Uh, includes a mini-map displaying players' positions and leaderboard. What else? And, I don't know. Yay, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I, th I, th I found it interesting. I mean, it isn't... Okay, in the grand scheme of things, it's a minor update. Um... But, you know, we, we hit on this when we talked, we did the Beyond the Gloves talking about uh, Project Cars 2 and all the stuff we got thrown at us. And one of the things that we thought was interesting was the um, 
the online modes and the ability to broadcast your race and have people watch and stuff like that and thought it was really cool. And I feel like this is kind of along those lines where it's, um, they're, they're minor things, but I think it's, it's nice to have. And, and I kind of wonder with it being, oh, <laughs> we're both kind of doing the same I'm waiting. thing. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay. I'll finish. Right. So, um, and with, with Forza Motorsport 7, we know is going to be coming out, you know, this fall as it does. Uh, I kind of wonder if this update, with it being so late in the development or lifespan of, of uh, 6, I wonder if this is a testing ground. Let's put this feature out in 6 and, you know, test it out in the wild and see how it is for implementation 7. Yes, <laughs> but again, another topic I don't want to get too far into, just I don't understand putting the resources into this now. Why not just wait till... we? More than likely, seven is coming out this year. Why not just wait? Put Test it in bed. there as a brand test bed. You know. Yeah, uh, test bed. <laughs> is there? But my my only problem is: is there enough people playing this still for it to be an actual test bed? And my other issue is, and we could have actually at for a Beyond the Gloves thing, we could actually have Gamer Muscle or Alan from uh, Team VVV on and discuss how seven needs to change. Assuming that it's coming to Windows 10 uh, from the console version of 6, the handling model and stuff, to get a, a broader audience on the sim side in, I think would be a, a good topic. Because the problem I have with this is you're making an eSports style game. I think that limits your pool that you're pulling from yeah. because of the handling model. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, yes, uh, Gamer Muscle, that was an invitation. We need, we want you to come on Beyond the Gloves. And and unlike the last time we had you on the show, we have our technical stuff figured out a little better. So I think last time we, he was on, it was, I don't know, it was kind of a mess because we didn't know what we were And now doing. we have to cross our fingers, knock on wood, and everything else, so. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, there's a process. You've got to do the steps. Yes. So, um, okay, so that does it for the news section, uh, even though we had a lot of news. We got through it in 48 minutes, so huzzah. Good um, job. That's right. Golf clap. Uh, happening. So uh, tomorrow, have a video. I if I, I was trying to get a preview out to show you guys today, but I didn't have time. Um, have a fictional Assetto Corsa modded track video coming out tomorrow. Um, we, we touched on fictional tracks last week, and um, it's like a pseudo-fictional. Uh, but it's but it's a mod track. Haven't done one of these probably in a long time for a set of Corsa. So um, yeah, I think it's kind of a different take on it. So I think that will be a lot of fun. I don't want to really give any more than that. Um, oh come on! Nope, that's all I'm teasing. Just one big right. tease. So you you already teased your R Factor video that you're going to be coming out later this week. Yes, so that, that's my tease. Um, and then. <laughs> Uh, re this isn't going to be a weekly thing, but I keep on finding comments I really like. So uh, there is another favorite comment of the week. And this one, unlike the last week's stuff, is just funny, is informative. Um, so last week we talked about the new F1 GT rig from Next Level. In the comments section, uh, Oz Racing, I believe, is a beta tester. Um, and he actually co answered some questions that we brought up, so I'm going to go ahead and read it, especially for you podcast folks. Uh, he wrote, I was lucky enough to try one of these out for a number of days and is actually very comfortable once you tinker about the adjustments of where you want the pedal plate and wheel stand fastened down. There are lots of holes to get it to set up just right. I prefer the GT position, but my older son is in his 20 for F1, which lays right back, legs stretch out more. It is very heavy, sturdy build quality, which I like for connecting my AccuForce DD wheel, which felt really good. Uh, and then I didn't grab the rest. Okay. Of it. So, um, yeah, that, I just wanted to note, and you can, I'll let you guys read the rest of that. But I just wanted to note that because that was a conversation we had last week when we um, showed that F1 GT rig, which uh, we right. thought looked really good. We were just kind of wondering about if it had, you know, how sturdy it would be. And here's one of the beta testers. And actually, I talked to um, uh, Hess from Next Level Racing. And uh, he actually sent me a picture of, I, I believe that guy's set up with the, the, the um, AccuForce on it. And he's like, yeah, this guy said it was solid. So um, well, that's, that's good. Yeah. yeah, so that's good news. And that, that'll be a rig that we'll be testing sometime, I don't know, sometime here in the future. But yep, a little, a little follow up on that. Sweet. Oh, oh, something else that uh, Deadpool just said here. 
Uh, the prices for the new AMD CPU is awesome. I I saw that right for the show. I, I did some research on it. I wanted to talk about that today, but I think I'm going to write a blog post and put that on the website here in the next 24 hours because I am I am very interested by what I've seen so far about that. Right. Yeah, it's a good it's a good deal. At least yeah. it seems like it. Yeah, which which I mean yeah, I, I, need, I need new CPUs in the worst way. So, uh, yes, we finally have a CPU battle for prices. Except except when they come out, I think they're coming out on March 2nd, the new AMD CPUs, and they'll probably be way expensive because everyone has to have them. But, okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't need one yet, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, in, you're in better shape with your CPU than I am. Um, let's see... Uh, okay, so that giveaway, I've actually gone and I've, and I got it this week, I think. I got it now. That's not it. Hi. That's not, that's not it. Wait. All right, that's not it. Where did I put it? Billy, talk about something. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, what about our poll question? Oh, let's talk about our poll question. Uh, you talk about it. He's the one that put it together. Okay, uh, which Sims future direction has you most excited? And I don't know the options. So Okay, yes, the options are, uh, because we talked about some subjects, or different, t- a few titles today about future stuff, uh, the, let's see, I think I have R Factor 2, Automobilista, Race Room, and Project Cars 2 there. So, based off the information that we talked about, uh, with future stuff happening, which one are you guys most looking forward to? And that is the poll question up here in the corner. If you click on the little eye about where the camera tripod is at, click. Okay, where in the hell did I put this thing? I really, I really, I really want to talk about this giveaway. I put it somewhere. Okay. In here. I'll just keep looking. Perfect. That's you. That's not. Oh, there it is. Okay, it popped up. Okay, we're gonna make this. Happen. Oh, Did we? I'm I'm sorry. Damn it. I didn't have it clicked properly. Did you just go through that whole thing and not, not yep. say a word? Yep, I did. Okay, let's do this over again. <laughs> the wheels are off. Thrustmaster TSPC Racer and T3PA Pro Giveaway. We're announcing a winner next week. You can apply by being a member on our forums and then going and following the directions in this forum post, which is answering these four questions about the TSPC racer and you have to answer you have to put in your real name and location so okay good I am apparently I'm back (laughs) (laughs) so uh, the link with all this information is in the description of the video so go ahead and click that (laughs) perfect you did Uh, that right on the money you know, I actually did a clean it the uh, second time I read I, I read it. So yes, you did. So good job. Yes, you guys, you guys got you guys got the better version. So that's what I get for forgetting that in forgetting to put that in before the show started. Okay, where are we at now? Q and A. Okay, so uh, right now you guys go ahead and put your questions into chat and Billy will be grabbing those. It looks like he's already grabbed so oh, a handful of questions. Um, I don't know what gamer muscles going on here about this one too. Oh. <laughs> he's, ans- he's answering he's answering the question. So that's either that's either prizes from you or or it's the channels of your audio. So first uh, channel one is about llama skin and channel two is about your hair dryer. I think those are separate podcasts. Actually. Yeah, yeah, those are separate podcasts. Um, so, rolling on to Q&A. Q&A presented by 
ProSim U. You can build a two degree to six degree of freedom simulator, simulator there at prices that start at 1,575 pounds for the T1002 motion. See prosimu-shop.com for more information. And for those of you who are with us on YouTube, there is the website. So, man, I tell you, I'm watching more Game Over Greggy and that kind of stuff. I'm working on, I'm working on getting better at my, <laughs> there you go. my readings. Those guys are so yeah, good yeah. at it. Get your Greg ways. That's right. So, um, Billy, you want to take the first question as you uh, drink? Uh, Brandon asks, is anyone on the ISR team going to E3 this year? And then, well, we'll go out of one at a time. Is anybody going, John? Uh, I don't know. I want to say yes, because that's what traditionally one, one person goes, uh, which would probably be me. Um, but E3 is open to the public this year, which... Um, I don't know. Kind of wonder what that's going to be like. We'll I think it's going to be hard to get in a word in edgewise. I, well, you know, I think this is what it's going to come down to. To go to E3 to make it worth your while, as I'm getting out of screen here, um, you have to have meetings set up with developers before you go. So last year going into it, I had something set up. But there were a lot of things that were kind of winging a prayer, like the, the Codemasters F1. Um, that got put together. I, I tried to get that organized, a meeting scheduled before, and just kind of bounced between PR folks. And, and finally got that figured out when I was literally at the show and kind of snuck up into the room, essentially. So, um, yeah, that's going to be really important this year. Because, yeah, to go and talk to people on the, on the show Yeah, floor, you're going to need appointments. Yeah. No, I don't think they're going to have a press day, uh, Gamer Muscle. I, th from what we understand, is it is. It would be nice if they did it like uh, the one over in what is it, Germany? Gamescom. Gamescom. I believe yeah. there's a press day over there, and then they have the general public. But I don't believe that's what they're doing with this E3. It would be better for everybody, in my opinion, if they did it that way. Press day for one or two days, and then general public for one or two days, and then just call it good. Yes. Uh, what was the second part of that question? Whatever happened to the motorcycle controls that were talked about long ago? Um, I don't know. Um, I can't remember his name. Once in a while, he pops in here saying made updates, and then we don't hear about it. So I honestly don't know what's going on with that. And then Darren's not here, but I don't think he's going to get any skiing in before the winter is over. Uh, I don't know. With as much weather we're getting out here, I mean, I've you know I've averted drowning uh, <laughs> about four times now in Northern California. Yeah, at least you guys didn't have that dam break on you. Well, yeah, but we've got other problems now. So. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Trek in 04. Anything new with iRacing Dirt? Billy, spill, spill your guts. Uh, anything new? Nothing that I should probably comment on. Um, there. Again, I reiterate that I have no idea if this is going to make season two. I I have no clue what their plan is. Um, they're still they're still working on it. It's not like fine-tuned mode yet in my opinion they're still they're still working on some stuff um doesn't mean that they haven't made a lot of progress uh just means that they're i just think that there were things that cropped up uh while myself and and a few other the other guys that have driven on dirt started pointing out that they were not prepared for um and not prepared for like oh my gosh we didn't think of it i thought they just maybe thought they had it more ironed out um they they just they're putting in a lot of hours and yeah i i wish i could say more <laughs> it'd be easier to explain okay no i mean hope I, as i keep on saying they need i hope hope it comes out sooner or later so billy can explain all his uh wisdom because he actually knows some stuff who knew <laughs> yeah right hey you know according to some people i don't know much which is fine you know that's okay well i mean Naturally, the internet. Um, yes, it's the internet. 
Artists bond, bonders, uh, Bonders, what of the new upcoming games do you want to play most? Dirt 4, Project Cars 2, Grand Turismo, and others. Um, definitely, interested in Project, uh, well, definitely interested in Dirt 4. Um, after our interview, we had some concerns, and um, everything that was talked about with the new track sounded uh, actually really, really neat. Uh, definitely kind of pivoted how I was. Definitely piqued my interest when he... Like I said in that interview, I had no idea that's how it worked, and that yeah, that whole thing sounds very exciting. If it if uh, you know, cross our fingers, it works right. Yeah, so uh, definitely interested in Dirt Four. Uh, very interested in Project Cars too. I mean, I mean, I, that has a lot of very neat features coming, and they seem to understand. The, I'm getting a sense that the, the development team seemed to really understand where their weaknesses were in one, and are really working to fix that. Mm -hmm. um so uh yeah no i'm I'm very interested in that uh you know gran turismo at the moment not really because who knows where we're gonna see it i got i got kind of i i tried it e3 last year uh i it was an improvement it got me kind of like okay i I got excited a little bit well i don't know excited but i i got interested and was looking forward to it and then it's been nothing so um yeah i don't know what to think about that and then yeah uh i just i'm really worried (laughs) <laughs> especially with Project Cars 2. I mean, I'm looking forward to Project Cars 2. I'm looking forward to getting the the iRacing Dirt content out. I'm looking forward, definitely looking forward to Dirt 4. Like I said, that we just talked about that whole track generation thing is pretty exciting. Um, and then what else do we got? I I hope, Gren, I hope GT7 or GT Sport is good. And I hope Forza Motorsport 7, if it more than likely it's coming out. I hope it's good. I hope it goes back the other direction. So, yes, yes. That that would be one pro going to E3 would be probably um a opportunity to try out uh Forza Motorsport 7. So, apparently my mic was clipping. I pushed it a little further away. Um I really got to I really got to up- I feel like I need to upgrade mics again. I think, I think Billy's got a better mic than I do. Um Let's see, what is uh, Tanis Dimitrov uh, want to get into an 80-20 rig with triple stand? Any tips on DIY? Um, check out our forums. There is a lot of 80-20 there's... discussion on the forums. Yes. Um, so just go there into the uh, rig simulator, whatever we have it named at, subforum uh, at isrtv.com, and go in there. There's a lot of good stuff in there. I know one of the guys... Um, Steve Spensley, I think the last name. He kind of started up his own company that does designs for eighty twenty. So uh, yeah, go check that out. One of these days, I'm going to build an eighty twenty rig. I want to. I've got part of one now. Like I said, Frank at Rickmotech sent me that that stand, and it's eighty twenty with. And then he's got. I don't know if they're three D printed feet that are on it, or just I some molds. But I I think they're three D printed. But it's nice and solid. Yeah, no, 80 like is pretty good stuff. So what's next? Um, Let's see here. Jack, your opinion on the new fin, uh, fanat... I always... <laughs> it messes me up because now that I know the correct way that he pronounces it, I, then I go back to thinking of it. Uh, fanatic upright pedal set. Uh, so that's for you, John, and are you going to review it? Uh, I have not done... I, where I go? Oh, I got him on the floor back here. Can you see him? Oh, you can see the box. Um, I have not installed them yet. I've only just pulled them out of the box, put a picture up on Instagram. Um, you know, kind of done the, the hand press and you know, pressed it with my foot while it's sitting on the on the ground. Um, I will be reviewing them. They do feel they feel sturdy, uh, from what you know, a little bit of what you can do with your hands. You know, people were saying they were worried about the uprights not being strong enough. They're not very thick. Blah blah blah. Um, but you know, so far with just kind of the eye tests, I I think they're gonna be fine. Uh, I got to figure out how to get them uh, into the rig because they are they're huge. And um, my uh, my Twitter buddy uh, Pete Morris, uh, who's a developer over on uh, Project Cars, he he's, he he commented on the photo on Twitter that he got he got a set and he really likes them. But it's like he made a comment that it was really hard to get them installed. And I think I'm gonna be kind of like I might have to pull my wheel off to slip it between the seats and, oh, and wow. down onto the pedal deck. Um, yeah, because they're, 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 they are really tall, and I don't have access for the back side of my rig with the wall being there. So, uh, 
Yeah, I'll probably put those in this weekend. Uh, Ow, video- like a personal problem. It is a personal problem. Yeah, just huge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to try to put them in this weekend because it, uh, the video coming out tomorrow features a Formula One car, and I, did, I wanted to use the standard V3 pedals for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll put them in this weekend, and uh, we'll review them at some point here in the near future, I guess. Hashtag soon. Yeah, I they fit on mine pretty easy. Well, so. you don't have the inverted ones. Well, that's what I'm saying. They would. Oh, okay. Mine, mine would yeah. not be. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, spatial. GTE versus GT3. What is the big difference, John? Uh, GTE cars have better... Uh, well, they, the first, they have Michelin tires. They're supposed to be grippier. They have more aero... Um, I believe that's what a difference, I believe that's the only difference. I don't think they have more horsepower, but I mean, essentially GTE cars are faster. Um, so that's the difference. I mean, the the GTE and GT3 Ferrari 488 visually, I, I think they have very little different visually between them. So I think just, I know the GTE cars have the massive diffusers. That's the only way you can tell a GTE car. We all know what they say about massive diffusers. I'm not going to say it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, slow bloke. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it hanging. Whoa, that's what... Never mind. Slo- <laughs> uh, slow bloke said, is there any rumblings of a CSW V3? Uh, oh, first off, Gary Muscle is still right about our first world problems. Um, is there any rumblings about a CSW V3? No, unless they... No. It, it sounds like... Last comment from Thomas at Fnatic was... The CSW V2 isn't going anywhere, even though they reduced the price uh, $100 back a couple weeks ago. And, uh, well, to $500 here in the U.S., I don't remember what the what the uh, European price is. And um, they are working on a direct drive wheel. And it's, so I, if I had to guess, it sounds like direct drive wheel is going to go above the CSW V2, and we're not going to see a V3 for a little while. Right. So that's my guess. Uh, Scorpion, Billy, will you be getting a motion rig? Uh, not in the foreseeable future. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Brooks, would it be possible to let us know when you're recording beyond the gloves so there could be a call-in section of the show? What a proper radio show is it? Oh man, that would be that would be something. Um, well, a that would require us to be much better with our schedule. <laughs> Cause yeah, like la- last week was funny. I I don't know I don't know how um I don't know how Codemasters gets work work done because apparently their internet was struggling. We were trying to do the Skype call and it, it kept on dropping. And then eventually we actually did the call and we use Skype so we can hear each other. So we have the earbuds in. Um, I actually eventually did the did the call tethered to uh, Paul's phone. So um, yeah, I I so yeah, it, it, it we were kind of delayed, but uh. Anyway, beyond the gloves, we're we're not gonna, we're just we're not gonna do any kind of question segment call and stuff. No, the the whole purpose of that show, and it would be nice to have be able to have a section like that, but with the way everything's got to work out, it's just not. But yes, go ahead. Um, uh, we do now have a section on the forums for Beyond the Gloves. Um, I haven't done anything with it, but Darren set that up over the weekend. So now, if you want to comment on the videos, uh, it will be done at the forums, and on our show for this week, we'll talk more about how to direct you guys that direction. So and that's, that's going to be kind of now where we're going to go and, and, and capture stuff, so if you guys want to interact in terms of us like reading off your responses at the end of the show. It'll be easier just to go there. Yep. Where are we at? Uh, Joshua, hey guys, thanks for helping out with recentering my wheel. But my question is, what do you believe Project Cars Two will need to become competitive with a title like iRacing uh, for the online ranking system? I don't know about com- competitive. They sold over a million copies in the first month of Project Cars One. Um, I mean, in terms of the online system, I don't know. I mean, the iRacing system, in my opinion, is is like is really good. And it seems like more developers are going that direction, and I have no problem with any developers just straight copying that system, because yeah. I, I I think it works. 
really well. And I know people always complain about different, you know, different things here and there, but I, I, I really don't think it can be much better than what it is. So do that. Yeah, I, I, I have yet to see a system that's better than that one, really. Um, you see the, what is it, SRS for Assetto take cues from it um, with their own spin on it. And I don't think that's a problem. I think that's good. Uh, I just don't. It, it works for a reason. Yep. If they don't have a patent, then uh, go ahead and copy away. Like some like someone last week when we like someone last week when we showed that next level rig, someone was like, "Oh, you got to pay some other company. They've done this before." And it's kind of like, do they have a patent? Do they have a patent in every single country around the world? Because yeah. you know you got to file in individual c countries to protect it. It's like you know, come on, guys. This people don't know how things work. Anyway, rant hash, uh, slash rant. Um, Tom Jones, uh, do you guys think? AMD builds will be a new thing for 2017. I think it could be. We'll have to see what the actual, you know, when it gets applied into the real world, what the performance is. And then, you know, if they can deliver on the promises, then I think you're going to see a lot of people get new uh, new builds. I, I think it's going to deliver. I mean, I, I watched a, the Linus Tech video that came out yesterday or today, uh, earlier today. And uh, yeah, performance-wise, it, it seems like their 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 comparisons are cheaper, and they're having better performance with uh, with their more more cores and stuff. So um, I expect it to be good, and we'll see. Hopefully, Intel will drop prices, and I can get a new CPU this year. The yeah. real question that I have is when um, uh, how games will respond to the new CPUs. Will there be any issues? Because normally, when new hardware comes out, sometimes things got to be adjusted. Um, so that's kind of my only question for early adopters. Uh, odd orange socks. I like that. What is the best way to stop motion sickness in VR? I don't know. I mean, probably for me, you would probably do it in short stints to begin with. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's the best advice I have is just work up to it. Go five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. Just kind of work work your way up. So yeah, beyond that, I don't really. Uh, know what else to do. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tim, looking at VR, probably will wait for the next generation of the Rift. Do you think that the 1070 will... He's at, just asking, do you think the 1070 will still work on the second generation stuff, or 1080 or beyond will be required? It's hard to say. You know, you like to think that a 1070, I mean, a 1070 will work. Uh, will you be able to take advantage of all the quality? Maybe not. But, I mean, I don't, you know, it, it's, it's too hard to say. We'll see, we'll see when the Gen 2 VR stuff shows up. If it shows up. I think yeah. it's going to show up. But I, I, well, cross our fingers. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. I just, I really want that next, just that next step in fidelity in the screens to really that that'll that'll be what sells it you know uh, one of, one of the reasons why i this is sort of course of video i got coming out tomorrow uh i shot in vr and um i i had the super sampling at like 1.2 that was all i could get out of it and super sampling makes such a big difference so um that's kind of got me got has me interested in a new cpu because i feel like my 1070 can handle it uh it's sure. just that my CPU is holding me back from turning that super sampling up higher. Because you get that super sampling up to like two, it looks a lot better. So, yeah, I've heard that from. Yeah, quite that's a few my hope. People. I think RTA yeah. and a few guys were saying doing the super sampling thing is the best way to go. Uh, Tom Jones, Billy, will you ever do any iRacing test drives? Yes. He's waiting for dirt. <laughs> And a short enough answer. No, I've actually, uh, beyond that, I've uh, been testing, trying to get a handle on iRacing's uh, what handling model, for lack of a better term. Because uh, it, it just, there's things that it does that doesn't, in my opinion, uh, don't feel right. Uh, so, like the stock cars. I've, I've been trying to run the stock cars. I hate, hate the stock cars. It is not good. There is no back end feel to those cars whatsoever. And from the guys that I've talked to that have run uh, in Cup and, and lower 
leagues that it that sensation is not translating. So, you know, hopefully they'll have some updates, especially with the tire stuff that they're learning now, like they got off of the uh, Porsche Cup car and the dirt stuff. And we'll be hopefully they'll be updating uh, a litany of different things. So, uh, yes, I do plan on doing it. And yes, uh, probably a decent amount of them will be dominated by dirt. Yep. Uh, let's see. Jack Sternquist. In any sim, more tracks or more cars? Uh, more tracks. I mean, I think a lot of sims out there have plenty of cars. I, we talk about this with Soda Corsa a lot. You know, they come out with more cars. and I, I mean, they've been coming out with some really great cars. The Porsche packs, really excited. I mean, really happy with. Um, but, man, need tracks. Yeah. I, 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 here's what I'd like to see. I would like to see more tracks, but if you're going to put out a car, put it out in a pack of cars together that can run with each other. Yeah. So if you're going to put out, uh, for instance, uh, you know, a BTCC car, put out as many of the cars as you can together in a group so you can put a full field of cars together. I don't agree with just throwing one car out there and going, okay, here you go. Now you can play with that one car that really has nothing else to run against it. I would rather have a track than have that. So that's my opinion. No, I, I mean, I agree. Uh, let's see. Deadpool, Q&A to Billy. Having seen your gaming collection, you have lots of games. Do you play any other genres apart from sim racing? To John and Billy, have... What are we getting at here? Uh, have you played Resident Evil 7 yet? And if so, how did you handle it? Because uh, RE7 scared the crap out of him. Okay, Billy, go go ahead. Uh, let's see. I play all kinds of stuff. So, what um, were you posting have, on Facebook the other day? The screenshots that was, too. That that was RE7. Okay. Yeah. So I tried to get it working on PC and it wouldn't work on PC. So I got a refund and then bought it on PlayStation Four. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So I I mean, survival horror is one of my favorite, especially the older stuff. RE7, the new one, is a return to that. It's probably my favorite one since 2. So, uh, really, in fact, I just finished that over the weekend. And uh, I used to play a lot of JRPGs. Don't play them so much anymore because usually they take a lot of time. Um, I'll play... Do you have, any, play interest, some of, do you have any interest in Horizon? Zero Dawn? Yeah. Y- yes. Okay, I'm just curious because I, I mean, you know, I, you know, listen, we both listen to kind of funny, and and I, they've oh, been talking yeah. about, they've been talking I about. I thought you were so gonna much. say like, you know, they sent me a code, and I'm gonna be oh, like, no. damn it. Oh <laughs> no, so I'm, I'm just curious. I was like, I wonder if something that Billy would pick up. Yes, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna play that. Uh, I really liked uh, The Last of Us, and I don't know, I, I play a whole bunch of different stuff. I'm not, you know, first person shooters to stuff that's really slow. So I'm, I'm all over the map. I just play racing games. Uh, let's see, and then and Lord knows, as we've talked about today, there's plenty of them to play. Uh, let's see, Orange Jector, uh, any new, uh, any new on Thrustmaster and Fnatic DD wheels? Nope, do not know anything there. Uh, Todd McDanger, Billy and John, have you ever gotten into RC cars as a diversion? Uh, I, I had RC cars back, it's been years now, but, uh, Billy, how about you? So my very first competitive experience was when I was five years old. I got approved by ROAR, which is the national sanctioning body here in the United States. I was one of the youngest kids to get approved, or youngest persons to get approved by ROAR to run. Because they're, they're an insurance, so if anybody gets injured from a car. So hmm. um, I got to start racing that. I, <laughs> this is how old I am. I started with the RC-10 when it first came. Uh, came out, and then I moved on to eight scale gas uh, on road, and won some real big races. Um, was partially sponsored. Never got a full ride. Like uh, I'm going to start naming names, and it doesn't mean anything. So um, my brother actually races for Team Associated, though. So he is a a sponsored driver for Team Associated on the one tenth off road stuff. So yes, we've I've had multiple iterations of RC cars from ever since I was five years old. If we've learned anything on the show is that Billy's way cooler than me because he, you know, RC cars and other games and he plays the guitar. You're winning, Billy. I, 
I, I don't I don't know if that's necessarily cooler, but sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'll get down towards the end here. Uh, Kevin Brooks, will there be a review of WRC six? I assume not at this point. No, I kind of gave my thought on it. I still maintain that that is not a terrible game. Um, I think people are expecting something different from it. So, okay, that, uh, if you, can, you can they can put that on the back of their box. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um dirty dubs do you think the sim racing community does enough to encourage new players or is the anti-console non-i racing sentiment prohibitive to growing the hobby oh good question i like that question that's a good question um and since that's the last one here we can talk about it for a while um boy uh, y- yes and no I think there's a li- I think there's a little bit of both. I do think there is a, a, a sentiment of some sim racers that um, they've been in it for a long time. They're in very deep, and they talk at you know this level. And for them to kind of bring it back down and bring someone new in is just kind of seems beyond their ability. Um, I do think there are those out there who do a really nice job of trying to be inclusive. I like to think that we're part of that. I think a lot of that what we do here is at least if i had to put like an objective what we do at inside sim racing uh one of the lines would be getting getting new race sim racers up to speed you know teach you know let it having a website where they have everything they need to go there and answer all these questions that's a a big thing we do and um gonna have some more sim racing explain videos coming like the one i did on what did i do it on i don't remember what i did it on it's been so long <laughs> but anyway, uh, there'll be more of those. Oh, I did it on resolution. That's right. I did it on wheel and pedal resolution. So um, have more of those on the way to hopefully explain these concepts that are always thrown out there, but there's no way for a new person to know. Because I know when I got into it, I'd say about 10 years ago, really, uh, the sim racing side with NASCAR Racing 2003, uh, boy, it was a steep learning curve figuring everything out. So um, that is something that we try to do here to be inclusive. What say you, Billy? I came from primarily, you know, running on the console. I still enjoy the console. I think there is a a spot for the people that like to drive on a console. I think it always frustrated me when people assumed that con, you know, people that raced on a console would just bash into each other and run each other off the road. Like I never drove that way, even though at the the time I couldn't afford a wheel. I used a gamepad, but I drove it like I was driving a car. I didn't drive it like I was running into people and just, and it would be frustrating because that's, that's the, that those were the things that you would end up hearing. And, you know, I, not, oh, not to be, uh, too, um, not to stick the knife in anywhere, but I, I, you know, I think this channel used to be a little like that at, at points. Um, I always got, I always kind of, I enjoyed watching the channel because I enjoyed seeing all the titles that I couldn't play. And I felt like it. there were there were points they did a, you know, Darren Shaw did a good job of covering a lot of different things. Um, I just every once in a while, a comment would be made and you just kind of like, ouch, that kind of stings like. I don't I don't associate myself that way, <laughs> so. I feel like. And especially as time has gone on, I think the gap gets more narrow. And I, I think what I try to bring the, to, the, to the table is I have my hands in a lot of different stuff. I have my hands in, in gaming in general. I have my hand, you know, in racing in real life, uh, coming from the console and then getting into the PC. And I'm, I mean, it, it takes a while to get going on the PC. I don't think people quite understand. I think people forget when they make that jump and they've been doing it for a while how daunting of a task it can it can be and it's much better than it used to be yes but it still is it can be a little bit of a task what do i need to get going i'm trying to calibrate my wheel and trying to understand you know what all these terms mean uh does does you know if you're getting into ice race i racing you just calibrate your wheel and then it tells you basically what you should be running at you know but it doesn't tell you that it just expects you to know and so i think there's I think when I do my test drives, I just want to showcase not necessarily 
I'm the fastest guy in the world. I just want to A, entertain, but B, highlight a good car or track combo and kind of show off the different things that, that are available and try to be as inviting as, as we possibly can because we can only buy so, we can only buy so much content as a consumer, the people that are already in. We need new people coming in and buying that content along with us to make it continue to flourish with as many titles as we have. So, I, it's hard. You, you see people with that sentiment, like you said, John, and then you see other people on Reddit helping somebody out for the first time that's struggling. Yep. Yep. So. No, I, I, think, I, I, think, I think it is a, uh, it is a mixed bag. But, um, okay, let's see. Anything else we want to hit before we take off? Uh, there was a question earlier was asking about uh, any videos of you running real dirt cars out there, Billy. Is, are there? Yes, they're on my brother's channel. Uh, I, you know, I, I, at some point we need to post like a montage of your racing videos because you, you also have some really sweet shifter cart videos that I would love to post on the channel. Yeah. Um, we could do that. <clears throat> the, the sprint car stuff is kind of while I was still learning. So some of it's really good. Some of it's not so great. Well, cut out the bad parts. Don't worry. Well, no, it's just one of those <laughs> things. Where, it's just one of those things where I was, we used the video part of it for me to understand, you know, what I was doing wrong and not driving the car hard enough and that kind of thing. So, uh, take it with a grain of salt with the sprint car stuff, but there are some good qualifying runs and, and stuff like that in there. And it gives you a, gives you a good idea. Um, and then the shifter car thing is again me learning, but um, God, I wish I wish I didn't hit the wrong button when I won the last race that I ran. <laughs> and all it did was take a picture. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's yeah. really cool. I came from like 15th and won it. It was it was a good race, and I, damn it, deleted deleted the video. No, I just never started it. Like oh. I, forgot, I forgot to start it, realized I didn't start it, and I'm so yeah. I'm trying to reach. I had it set up on my um, radiator over here, and so I'm trying to reach and like press it right, and it took a picture because I held it too long instead of just pushing it and letting it record. So uh, wow, gotcha. wow, wow, wow! Well, you just gotta get out there and do more races so we can uh, we can watch them. Yeah, someday. <laughs> okay. Bye. So, I think that will do it for this week's episode of This Week Inside Sim Racing, February 22nd edition. Is that where we are? Yeah, that's where yep. we are. Uh, again, as always, thank you for watching. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm dying. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks, you guys. And chat had a lot of good conversation here today. And, uh, yeah, what else? Going to be some videos. I got a video coming out tomorrow. Billy has one probably coming out Friday, Saturday. We'll have a Beyond the Gloves on Sunday. All sorts of good stuff. Yeah. And maybe and, so. may, and maybe a review of the um uh what's it called? The don't say uh it. the what? Don't say it. I don't know what I, I don't think you know what I'm going to say. No. Um <laughs> I know I don't know what you're going to say. Don't say it anyways. <laughs> I know. I I'm setting myself for failure. I'm thinking about maybe right. this we can do a review, review of the CPX um uh, uh board. What's it called? Adapter where you can go and plug oh, all the, the the basher board, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think I might try to knock that out. Because that review is kind of easy. You just plug everything in and it works or it doesn't work. So uh, I might have that coming up in the in the coming week. But anyway, that will do it for Billy Strange. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the same side every time. I know. Billy Strange. I'm John Sable. Thanks for watching Inside Sim Racing. See you guys next time. Thanks, guys. That was interesting. I had to turn myself down quite a bit.